Hi everyone. I'm Lab Loy Chong from National Center for Research on Earthquake Engineering. And from the Departments of Civil Engineering, National Taiwan University, and National Chenggong University. This is my name in Chinese, Zhong Li Lai. Welcome to the lecture, Introduction to Seismic Design of Structures. This is lecture 6-1, Dynamic Analysis of Single Degree Freedom Structure 1. If the forcing function is changing with time, then the analysis of structure becomes a dynamic problem. And in this lecture, we focus on external forces that cannot be expressed as simple functions. Therefore, exact solution may not exist. Instead, we will solve the problem numerically. And here are some terminology, dynamic analysis. In Chinese, Dong Li Fen Xi, sampling period is the interval between two sampling data. In Chinese, Qu Yang Zhou Qi, continuous time signal is the signal is continuous, varies, varies continuously with time. Then we call it continuous time signal. In Chinese, 连续时间讯号. This discrete time signal, after sampling, the signal becomes discrete in time. In Chinese, it's called 离散时间讯号. Difference equation. Originally, the motion equation is an ordinary differential equation. After some manipulation, it becomes difference equation. In Chinese, 差分方程式. Dynamic responses. After dynamic analysis, we can find out the dynamic responses of structures, including displacement, velocity, and acceleration. A single degree freedom structure can be modeled as mass spring damper system. M is the mass of the structure, C is the damping coefficient of the structure, and K is the stiffness of the structure, and Ft is the external force, and Xt is the displacement variable of the structure. And here is the free body diagram. From Newton's second law, Ma equal to the resultant force. The resultant force consists of external force Ft, and is positive because it's pointing to the right. And the, stiff, uh, the restoring force, Kx, is negative because uh, if x is positive, then the restoring force is pointing to the left. And the damping force, Cx star, is also negative. After moving minus Kx and Cx star to the left-hand side of the equation, it becomes mx double down plus Cx star plus Kx equal to Ft. is a second order ordinary differential equation. And the motion equation of the damped single degree freedom structure from engineering mathematics is a second order because of the second derivative and it is a ordinary differential equation is non-homogeneous because of the non-zero forcing function and uh, with constant coefficient because m, c, k are constants they do not vary with time. M is the mass of the structure, C is the damping coefficient of the structure, K is the stiffness of the structure. And initial force is, is induced by the acceleration of the structure, you go to Mx double dot. Damping force is induced by the velocity of the structure, you go to Cx star. Restoring force is induced by the displacement of the structure, equal to kxt, and ft is the external force applied to the structure. And seismic force and wind forces are time varying. They are function of time, but in general they are random, they are not repeatable, and they are irregular. 
Ojit originally seismic force and wind force are continuous time signal because they vary continuously with time. And uh, after sampling, it becomes a discrete time signal. And sampling period equal to delta T. That means that the seismic force and wind force are recorded at certain time interval. And the time interval is called sampling period. After sampling, it becomes a discrete time signal. And F n equal to F of n delta T. And after sampling, uh, we only have the information about the seismic force or wind force at 0 delta T, 1 delta T, 2 delta T, etc. If the, sample, if the sampling period is very short, then we can assume that during this interval, the forcing function is constant. With this uh, assumption, the forcing function becomes a piecewise constant. If we are interested only in the time from n delta t to n plus 1 delta t, during this time interval, the forcing function is a constant. Therefore, the equation of motion becomes mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx equal to ft, and ft is a constant. And if we replace t, the variable t, by tau, and tau equal to t minus n delta t, therefore the mo equation of motion becomes mx double dot of tau plus n delta t plus cx dot of tau plus n delta t plus kx of tau plus n delta t equal to fn, and fn is constant. Now the time interval becomes from 0 to delta t. When tau equal to 0, t equal to n delta t, therefore the initial displacement x of n delta t equal to xn, the initial velocity x dot of n delta t equal to x dot n. If we let y tau equal to x tau plus n delta t, then y dot tau equal to x dot tau plus n delta t, y double dot tau equal to x double dot of tau plus n delta t. If we substitute these three equations, three equations into the into the ordinary differential equation, then the equation of motion becomes my double dot plus cy dot plus ky equal to fn. And tau varies from 0 to delta t, and fn is constant. Then we have initial displacement y0 equal to xn, and initial velocity y dot of 0 equal to x dot n. If we rename the variable tau by t, and because we are much more familiar with the variable t than tau, therefore the motion equation of the structure becomes my double dot plus cy dot plus ky equal to fn. And it is valid from uh, t larger than or equal to 0 to less than delta t. And the initial displacement y0 equal to xn, and y dot of 0 equal to x dot n. Because this is a non-homogeneous ordinary differential equation, therefore the general solution consists of two parts. One is the homogeneous solution, and the other is the particular solution. From previous lectures, we know that the homogeneous, homogeneous solution equal to exponential minus zeta omega zero t times c1 cosine omega dt plus c2 psi omega dt. Omega zero equal to square root of k divided by m, and zeta is the damping ratio of the structure equal to c divided by square root of mk, and omega zero is the natural frequency of the structure. Omega d is the damped natural frequency of the structure equal to omega zero square root 1 minus zeta square. Because the forcing function is constant, 
in this range from uh, 0 to delta t. Therefore, the particular solution can be solved by the mass of undetermined coefficient. And after solving the particular solution, the undetermined coefficient becomes 1 divided by k. Therefore, we have the general solution with two coefficients of integration, c1 and c2. c1 and c2 can be solved by the initial condition y0 equal to xn and y dot 0 equal to x dot n. And here's the structural displacement. And uh, taking the differentiation, we can have the structural velocity. And uh, please, please know that uh, this structural displacement is valid in the range from t larger than or equal to 0 to less than delta t. From the initial conditions, y0 equal to y of 0 equal to c1 plus 1 divided by k fn so that we can solve for c1 equal to y0 minus 1 divided by k fn. From the initial velocity, y dot 0 equal to y dot 0 equal to c1 because exponential of 0 equal to 1, psi 0 equal to 0, and cosine 0 equal to 1. Therefore, c1 times minus zeta omega 0 plus c2 times cosine 0 equal to 1, therefore c2 times omega d. And from this, this equation, we can solve for c2 equal to 1 divided by omega d times y dot of 0 plus zeta omega 0 divided by omega 0, y 0, minus zeta omega 0 divided by omega d k, fn. After solving for c1 and c2, we can substitute C1 and C2 back to the structural displacement. Then we can solve for structural displacement back to the structural velocity. Then we can solve for structural velocity. So that we have the structural displacement, something like that. And uh, after rearrangement, yt, the structural displacement, can be expressed as something multiplied by y0 plus something, a coefficient, multiply y dot 0 and plus something multiply fn divided by k. And please note that uh, this structural dis displacement is valid from t larger than or equal to 0 to t less than delta t. It is only valid in this range. And if we substitute C1 and C2 back to the structural displacement, structural velocity, then we can solve for structural velocity. And after the arrangement, y dot t, the structural velocity, can be expressed as something multiplied by y0 plus something multiplied by y dot 0 plus something multiplied by fn. And the structural velocity, the equation for the structural velocity, only valid from t larger than or equal to 0 to t less than delta t. If we substitute t equal to delta t to the structural displacement and to the structural velocity, then we, have, we can have y delta t and y delta t equal to y1. And y delta t is a continuous function and y1 is a discrete time function. And after rearrangement, we can have something multiplied by y0 plus something times y dot of 0 plus something times fn. Similarly, for the velocity, if we substitute t equal to delta t to the velocity, then we can have the velocity at t equal to delta t and it is assigned as y dot 1. And after rearrangement, we can have something times y0 plus something times y dot 0 plus something times fn. So that we can have the structural displacement expressed uh, express as a11 times y0 plus a12 times y dot 0 plus b1 fn. 
because y0 equal to xn, y dot 0 equal to x dot n, and fn equal to fn, and y1 equal to xn plus 1. And from this equation, we can observe that if we know the information about displacement at step n, velocity at step n, forcing function at step n, then we can find the displacement at n plus 1 step. Similarly, for the structural velocity, and y dot 1 equal to something times y0 plus something times y dot 0 plus something times fn. If we assign this coefficient as a21 and assign this coefficient as a22 and assign this coefficient as by b1, then we can have y dot 1 equal to a21 times y0 plus a22 times y dot of 0 plus b1 times fn and y0 equal to xn, y dot 0 equal to x dot n, and fn equal to fn, and y dot 1 equal to x dot n plus 1. And from this equation, we can observe that if we have the information about displacement at step n, velocity at step n, and forcing function at step n, then we can calculate the velocity at next step. And the structural, the, this, uh, the equation for structural displacement, xn plus 1 equal to a11x of n plus a12x dot of n plus b1fn, and this is called first order differen difference equation. Because in addition to the current step, only the next step is involved in this equation. Therefore, it's called first order differential equation and a11 equal to exponential minus zeta omega 0 delta t cosine omega d delta t plus zeta omega 0 divided by omega d sine omega d delta t zeta here is the damping ratio of the structure it is constant omega 0 is the natural frequency of the structure it is constant delta t is the sampling period it is also constant it is also fixed and omega d is the damn natural frequency of the structure. Therefore, A11 is constant. It does not vary with time. And A12 equal to exponential minus zeta omega 0 delta t times psi omega d delta t divided by omega d. And here, similarly, zeta is the damping ratio, omega 0 is the natural frequency of the structure, delta t is the sampling period, is fixed. Omega d is the damn natural frequency of the structure. Therefore, a11 is also a constant coefficient. And b1 equal to 1 divided by k times 1 minus exponential zeta omega 0 delta t times cosine omega d delta t plus zeta omega 0 divided by omega d sine omega d delta t. Similarly, zeta is the damping ratio, omega 0 is the natural frequency, delta t is the sampling period, and k is the stiffness of the structure. They, are, they all are constant. Therefore, b1 is a constant coefficient. Therefore, if we have information about displacement at step n, the current step, velocity at step n, the current step, and the forcing fun function at step n, Therefore, we can calculate the displacement of next step. Similarly, for velocity, x dot of n plus 1 equal to a21 times xn plus a22 times x dot n plus b2 times S fn. Because omega 0, the natural frequency, omega d, the damped natural frequency, zeta, the damping, the damping ratio, are all constant, and delta t are also is also constant. Therefore, a21 is a constant coefficient, and a22 are function of zeta, omega 0, delta t, and omega d. They are all constants. 
Therefore, A22 is also a constant coefficient. And B2 is a function of M, omega D, zeta, omega zero, and delta T. And they are all constants. Therefore, B2 is a constant coefficient. Therefore, from this equation, we have, if, we have, if we know the displacement at current step n, the velocity at current step n, and also the for forcing function at current step n, so that we can calculate the velocity of next step. And this is also called first order differential difference equation because, of, because instead of, in addition to the current step n, only the next one step is involved in this equation. Therefore, it's called first order difference equation. And from the motion equation, motion equation can be considered as equilibrium equation. If we substitute, if we divide the equation by m, so that we can have x double dot and move this term to the right hand side of the equation, minus c divided by m x star, and move this term to the right hand side of the equation, we have k divided by m xt plus 1 divided by m ft. And if we assign t equal to n plus 1 delta t, so that we have x double dot n plus 1 delta t minus k divided by m x of n plus 1 delta t minus c divided by m x star of n, my n plus 1 delta t plus 1 divided by m f of n plus 1 delta t. And we can simplify this equation to x double dot of n plus 1 equal to minus k divided by m x of n plus 1 minus c divided by m x dot n plus 1 plus 1 divided by m f of n plus 1. And from the previous two slides, we can calculate x of n plus 1, and also we can calculate x dot of n plus 1. Therefore, x of n plus 1 can be calculated, x dot of n plus 1 can be calculated and f of n plus 1 is known. Therefore, we can compute x, dot, x double dot of n plus 1. Therefore, from this equation, we can have the displacement of next step. From this equation, we can have the velocity of next step. And from this equation, we can have the acceleration of the structure of next step. If we repeat the procedure step by step, we can, we can compute all the, dis, the displacement of all steps, the velocity of all steps, and also the acceleration of all steps. And in this lecture, we transform the, the motion equation from differential equation to difference equation, so that we can have the structural displacement expressed as difference equation and structural velocity expressed as first order difference equation and from the equilibrium equation we can calculate the structural acceleration. Therefore from the current step of displacement, velocity and forcing function we can calculate the displacement of next step, the velocity of next step. From the displacement of next step the velocity of next step and also the forcing function of next step, then we can compute the acceleration of next step. If we repeat the process step by step, we can find out the displacement of all steps, the velocity of all steps, and also the acceleration of all steps. Therefore, we can complete the dynamic analysis of single degree of freedom structure numerically. And here are some references for, references for these uh, lectures. The first one is ordinary differential equation. It can be found from any textbook on engineering mathematics. The second one is difference equation. You can find the reference from uh, any textbook on engineering mathematics. And this is the video for lecture one, an English version and Chinese version. And videos for lecture two, 
English version and Chinese version, and videos for letter three, English version and Chinese version, and video for letter four, English version, English version and Chinese version, and here are videos for letter five, and here for video, and here is a video for letter six dash one, and it is under construction. This is the Chinese version. And in this, in this lecture, we transform the motion equation from differential equation to difference equation with the assumption that the external force are constants within a sampling interval. Therefore, external force are expressed as piecewise constant function. With this uh, difference equation, the dynamic responses including displacement, velocity, and acceleration can be solved step by step. Thank you. That's all for this lecture. See you next time. Bye-bye.